Hey, shout out to uh, Live Raven Nation on Twitter because if there's ever anything that you miss as a Baltimore Ravens fan, they will let you know of it. And this was something that I had not seen. This article from USA Today is called Seven Potential Salary Cap Casualties for the Baltimore Ravens in 2024. And they got some names and some moves that I didn't even think of. None of us even thought of. Well, maybe some of y'all did. I know some team can be clean, be ready to cut anybody. They messed up one play. Get them off the team, buddy. But anyway, we about to get into this article, and they put some stuff in some interesting ways, and we're going to talk about it. But before we do, make sure you subscribe to the channel, turn your notifications on, and do not miss a single video. And also leave a like on the video because it helps a lot. Now, this article, I will link it down below in the description. If I forget to, remind me uh, because I'll be forgetting a lot of stuff. It is called, again, Seven Potential Salary Cap Casualties for the Ravens in 2024. And it is by Glenn Irby. This was put out on February 13th, so a couple days ago. Anyway, it says the Baltimore Ravens uh, uh, has officially concluded uh, with the Chiefs' Super Bowl win. And the focus now shifts to what's ha was shaping up to be a franchise-altering offseason for general manager Eric DaCosta. Where things currently stand, the Ravens are expected to have roughly about $7.3 million cap space uh, via over the cap. And that's the 20th most in the NFL. That number could grow if the team opts to part with some expensive contracts. Perhaps Ronnie Stanley and Marlon Humphrey. So from jump. From jump, they like, hey, hey we're just going to throw it in there casually. Perhaps Ronnie Stanley and Marlon Humphreys. Whoa. Whoa. But let's go. The Ravens have 48 players currently under contract for the 2024 season. We're looking at seven potential pre-free agency casualties per the over-the-cap transaction table. Number one, the one that they listed first. And I guess this is in no particular order, but Ronnie Stanley says, uh, the cap savings for releasing Ronnie Stanley will be $15 million. But... The dead hit. The dead money hit would be eleven mil. So real quick, um, you know, doing the math and that, that's a little less than four mil that would come available. But um, how does that work? Because uh, for any of y'all that would understand it more thoroughly than I do, the way that I would assume, especially reading this, that it will work. All right, cap saving. You will save fifteen mil. All right, hey, we get fifteen mil back. Cool. But the dead money hit would be a little over 11 mil because it says 11.1 point, excuse me, 11 mil, uh, $168,250. So a little over 11 mil. So that would be the dead money hit. So I'd assume that the money that you save and the dead money hit will both go onto the cap this year. So that would give you a little over 4 mil. That's the way I think it is, but I'm not 100% sure. So if somebody could explain that in the comment section, we would all appreciate it. But anyway, it says... The talented offensive tackle has started every game since he was a rookie in 2016 and has dealt with injuries since 2019. He played seven games between the 2020 and 2021 season and missed five in 2022. In 2023, Stanley missed just four games, dealt with injuries throughout the season, and spent the final stretch on a pitch count. When Stanley's healthy, he's a solid player, but hasn't been a pro bowler or all pro player since 2019. An outright cut or trade of Stanley would leave Baltimore with 17 mil in dead cap space. While a post-June 1st move makes the most sense. Uh, in 2023, Stanley finished 37th in, oh, no, I don't like the PFF stuff. So, uh, the PFF can be really weird. They can be very inconsistent, so we're not even going to read that. No disrespect to them, of course, but we're not going to read that part. Um, so, Ronnie Stanley is the one that has been a conversation amongst a lot of Ravens fans on if the Ravens should cut or keep him. Um, so, yeah, and I get it. Again, with, with Ronnie Stanley, you know what life is like without Ronnie Stanley more than you know what life is like with him. Uh, with somebody who's a starter... Like, with him and Morgan Moses is crazy. And that was some crazy that I, I remember toward the end of the season. And they mentioned it, them being on a pitch count. An offensive line on a pitch count. That was crazy. I mean, it was working. This was no problem. But, yeah, on a pitch count. Mm. Moving on. He said, uh, next is a post-June 1st cut or trade with Tyus Bowser. And I think with this one, this is one that we all, like, we know is going to happen. We know Tyus Bowser not going to be with the Baltimore Ravens next year. They have – this is just a weird relationship. I don't know what was going on, but he's all but gone, in my opinion. Nothing's official yet, but I feel like we all feel like this move is definitely happening because just like with Ronnie Stanley, but really with Tyus Bowser, he was going a whole year. So you really know what life is like without Tyus Bowser. You really do. Talented player when he plays, but you, you, you've seen life without him this whole year. Whole year. Whole year. And they said the cap savings for Tyus Bowser would be 5.5 mil, while the dead cap hit would be just 2 mil. So with the dead cap hit, with the cap savings outweighing the dead cap hit by a, a significant amount, especially with that, you, you, it's like you, 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 you just know, man. You, you just know. 
Um, so yeah. It also mentioned a uh, cut or do a post June first cut or trade. Trade ain't gonna happen with him, but Pat Ricard. So ooh, that's a surprising one there. Uh, it said the cap savings for Pat Ricard would be four million dollars. Oh, that's really that's a lot. I, I know he's getting paid, but whoa, that's that's a lot of cap saving money for a fullback. And we know Pat Ricard; he does a lot. He does a whole lot for the Baltimore Ravens. Well, when they want to use him, but he does a whole lot for the Baltimore Ravens. He's an extra offensive lineman. He's a wide receiver. He's a running back. He's a tight end. He's all all that stuff. But it said the cap savings for Pat Ricard would be four mil, but the dead cap hit would only be one point one mil. So again, another move with now this one I I'm for sure that it's gonna happen with Bowser, but with Pat Ricard, I don't know. Uh now unless they cut him. Only way I see it happening with Pat Ricard is if they cut him, then they brought him back for cheaper. That's it. That's the only way I see it happen. I I, I think part Pat Ricard is with the Baltimore Ravens next year, for sure. My opinion. I it, 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 if he doesn't come back at his current contract, okay. But I think he'll be back with the Ravens for sure. So I can see this happening, but then I can see them be like, hey, Pat, you ain't going nowhere, buddy. But <laughs> hey, don't let him Ben Mason you, though. Anyway, next, cut, post-June 1st, cut, Morgan Moses. Oof. So that'd be something. Now, I wonder, I wonder if the Baltimore Ravens would do that, where well, they would really jump out there, if they possibly got rid of both their starting offensive tackles. That'd be Ronnie Stanley and Morgan Moses. That would be, ooh, that'd be something right there. And I know some people say, oh, Voorhees, Voorhees, Voorhees. I get it, but slow down now because he's coming off a big injury. So do you want to all put all your eggs in that basket? Do you want to do it? Because you've done that before with guys coming off a big injury, especially offensive linemen. Ron, Ronnie Stanley. Look, Hey, even they, they did it with um the one who was working out off-site and he was with the Broncos and they cut him. Oh, what's his name? Oh, his, I, I I cannot think of his name. He was bald. It was a couple years ago, and then the <laughs> Ravens signed him. And they uh, when he started, he ended up getting hurt like on the first game. I cannot think of his name, man. I, I ain't gonna stay on it because I'll be here forever. But y'all know, I know somebody in the comments gonna know exactly who I'm talking about, and they're gonna say it and be like, ah, that's it. I can't remember it though. But anyway. Morgan Moses, if they did a cut or post June first cut, cap savings would be five point five million dollars, with the dead money being one point four mil. So that's another one where the savings outweigh the dead money by a significant amount. So when it looks like that, that's when you could really think, oh, this could actually happen. I don't know, buddy. So we'll see. <laughs> I don't know about this next part. It did say, uh, it said Baltimore's confidence in Daniel Filele being ready and able to step into the starting role would also be a factor. So if it's based on that, then it ain't happening yet. Because they are not confident in Daniel Filele being a starter right now. You can tell that. And that's no offense to Daniel Filele at all. But you can tell by the Baltimore Ravens' actions that they are not confident in him being a starter right now. Next, oh, this one is this one's interesting right here, buddy. It said cut or do a post June 1st cut. Or trade Justice Hill. Mm. So the cap savings would be 2.4 mil, but the dead cap hit would only be $500,000. See, I like Justice Hill. I think Justice Hill came a long way um, for the Baltimore Ravens this year. He was involved a lot, uh, he was a big part of what they did. Um, and he's a, he could always be a contributor. He can continue to be a contributor. He's somebody that uh, could be. Relied on, especially because their running backs just kept going down. They kept getting hurt. J.K. Dobbins, Keaton Mitchell, it just, oh, it was ugly. Uh, and you know, with Gus Edwards, you know, Ravens, they, they, they didn't care about Gus Edwards like that anyway. They don't believe in Gus Edwards like that anyway. Um, so with Justice Hill, he's somebody that got a, a good amount of opportunity this year. And he showed himself, man. He showed himself. So I would like Justice Hill to stay because um, that's quality, quality depth right there. And somebody who can be a starter in cases too. Uh, what I said, yeah, cap savings 2.4 mil, dead cap hit 500,000. So that's like, Nothing when it comes to a dead cap hit I mean not nothing but it ain't much So mm, Yeah that's uh, We're gonna see though And the way they put it they said if you have Derrick Henry in a potential Free agent signing and Keith Mitchell returning back From injury maybe Baltimore drafts a running back and allows Gus Edwards to depart in free agency while Cutting Hill outright mm. He said the hard running dual threat Has that physical edge that the Ravens love But he's not elite and nor is he a game Changer It's an interesting way to put that um, 
Very interesting way to put that. Uh, I think he can be. I I think I think he can be. Um, cause we've seen him make some really really nice plays throughout the year. Um. So anyway, moving on. Next is that cut or do a post June first cut or trade Patrick McCarry. Ah, that's an interesting one. That's Mister Do It All, and he that's pretty much a starter because Ronnie Stanley will be out a lot. Uh, he could play any position on the offensive line. So somebody hurt. Hey, Pat McCarry, I go step in, and he would. Um, now this one says for the cap savings it would be four point three mil, but the dead cap hit would only be two mil. So, not a crazy difference, but a significant difference nonetheless. Uh, so yeah, hmm. let's see. Now, uh, this one right here, uh, last but certainly not least, I uh, says post June first cut Marlon Humphrey. Wow. This is one that um, throughout this year, a lot of Ravens fans, they were having this conversation on what the Baltimore Ravens should do or could do with a Marlon Humphrey. We know this year was definitely a down year for him. He was hurt a lot, a lot more than he normally is. And we know ever since he signed his contract, he's actually, he don't been getting some injuries here and there now. Um, but this year, injuries just, they have impacted him the worst that, in my opinion, that we've ever seen since he's been with the Baltimore Ravens um, and this had a lot of people questioning what the Ravens should do with Marlon Humphrey let's read the article though it says uh, cap savings would be 11.7 mil uh, the dead money would be 11.1 mil so right off the bat with that makes no sense that to me that makes no sense the cap savings 11.7 mil the dead money 11.1 mil 600,000 for getting rid of Marlon Humphrey that would be and I don't like to use this word off. The, but that would be dumb, in my opinion. That would be stupid. If you you're gonna only save about six hundred thousand dollars, forget. But let's read the breakdown. See what they talking about. Says so still only twenty seven years old. Oh, he's only twenty seven. Wow. Humphrey signed a five year contract extension with the Ravens in twenty twenty, worth ninety seven point five mil in new money and forty point three in full guarantees of signing. Humphrey has an additional thirty mil investing in roster guarantees. A roster bonus guarantees throughout the contract, bringing the total guarantee to 70.3 mil. The Ravens converted 9.42 mil of salary to a bonus in 2023, creating 7.5 million cap room. Humphrey's cap number from 2024 to 2026 increased by 1.884 million annually. There is now an additional void year in 2027. Humphrey, a three time Pro Bowler, missed a career high eight games this season with foot, hamstring, and calf injuries. In 10 games, he had 26 tackles, five passes defended or defensed, and one interception. Baltimore finished with the number six pass defense in the NFL without him and didn't allow a 300-yard pass this season heading into its AFC title loss to the Chiefs. Oh, they didn't? Wow. I didn't know that. That is great. Man, what a wasted season, man. Oh, that's so frustrating. I did not know that. I didn't know they ain't, they ain't let nobody get 300. Really? Not even the Matt Stafford game? Not, not even when they played the Rams? It said it's unlikely to happen, but the Ravens would still have a stout defensive unit with the move. Ooh, boy. <laughs> that is crazy. I really look, let me look something up real quick. Cause I, I just I thought Matt Stafford definitely went over 300 in that game. Let me see. Ravens versus Rams 2023. Let me let me just look this up. Um, yeah, player stats. Alright, here we go. Oh, that was game was on December 10th, 2023. Box score, Matt Stafford. Oh, <laughs> he threw, he went 23 out of 41. Three touchdowns, no interceptions. He passed for 294 yards. Oh, he was right there. <laughs> See that? That's one of them stats. Oh, they didn't give up a 300-yard passer. Technically, it's true. It's true. Can't take it away from him now. It's true. But Matt Stafford was knocking on the door. He, hey, but hey, they didn't give it up. So, hey, it is what it is. Can't, can't fight facts So anyway Now I didn't even know that this last name right here was in the article Post June 1st cut I thought it ended at Marlon Humphrey But it is not It said post June 1st cut Mark Andrews Ooh all the names that Ravens fans have been having conversations about They got them all in here it Says cap savings would be 11 million dollars While the dead money would only be 5.9 mil. So the dead money would be about $6 million. The cap saving would be $11 million. So that's a difference of $5 million. That's significant right there. 
And then you saw what I was like. Let me just read. It says Andrews signed a four-year, $56 million contract with the Ravens on September 6, 2021. Andrews received $37.58 million in guarantees, of which $30 million was guaranteed at signing. Andrews had a down season due to injury, but should return to form in 2024. But with Isaiah Likely's emergence, a move could be made. And I know for this one, ooh, this, ooh, this is a sensitive t- topic right here, boy. Mark Andrews. We love Mark Andrews. Mark Andrews is a baller. Um, and I know a, a lot of Ravens fans be like, oh, we don't need Mark Andrews. We could do it with Isaiah Likely. We could get it done with Isaiah Likely. Um, and then my re- initial response was always, hey, like, hold up. No, like, why not both? Why not both? The more, the merrier. But when they have both, Ravens just can't seem to get them both involved. They can't get them both going. For, for some weird reason, I don't know what it is. They can never get both going, ever. Never. I'm not saying to cut Mark Andrews now, but I'm saying that, like, when you think about it, mm, oof, it's a tough conversation. It's a tough conversation, man. It really is. But you see Mark Andrews out there. When he, when he play, he can ball now. Hey, he can. Well, it's not that likely he's out there. He can ball too, man. And we've seen it. Both of these dudes can play. But the Ravens just, they can't seem to get them to play together. And it's one of the weirdest things that we've seen recently when it comes to the Baltimore Ravens. But something for you to think about. Team, keep it clean. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, turn your notifications on, leave a like on the video. And just like some of these players are going to be, not all of them, but some of them definitely for sure. Well, it ain't going to be official to official, but just like some of these players could be and probably will be, we out.